how do you think about position sizing? You always want more in your winners. You always want nothing in your losers. How so do you think about position sizing? So the way we think about it is we're willing to risk a certain amount of capital on any one investment. And so if, and we, you know, if you're investing in the world's most dominant music company, Universal Music, it's has very little debt. It has a great market position and you can predict the business with a very high degree of confidence and you're buying it at a fair price. You can assess what's the chance of our losing 25% of our investment, you know, over a several year holding period. And if the answer is very close to zero, which is kind of our assessment, we can make an investment like that quite large, right? If you think about, well, for risking 20, let's say the most we could lose in our view on that, not just daily mark to market loss, but a permanent impairment, what would have to happen for us to be permanently impaired to lose 25% of our capital in that investment? Something pretty extraordinary. So that kind of investment can be 25% of our assets because it's something where uh, the risk of loss is very diminished by virtue of the robustness of the business, the, excuse me, the capital structure of the company. Whereas you're buying an interest rate derivative, you know, we bought, in effect, the way to think about it is we bought a call option that paid off when two-year interest rates went above 93 basis points. And we had about an 18-month term. And at the time we bought that instrument, uh, two-year rates were at 12 basis points. So it's a bit like buying a call option on a stock the stock is 12 and the strike price of the call option is 93. It looks massively, massively out of the money. And there's a fixed time frame, right? So on something like that, the risk of loss is, is high because just to break even, you've got to cross, you know, the, the yield, if you will, has to go up, you know, whatever, 9x or something, right? 8x to, to, to get into the break even territory. And so something like that we made quite small. It was less than, it was about a point and a half of our. I mean, a little under 2% of our capital, but could it have been 3%? Could it have been 4% for sure. And so when I look back at something like that, I would have been willing to lose more, um, but we had not been an active participant in the interest rate derivatives market, so we we're a little timid. Timidity has held back our, our results for sure. And I, I, I think it was, what's interesting about those kind of bets is when you find a hedge that will protect you if rates rise, but it's also a really interesting investment on a standalone basis. Like you'd make it even if you didn't own a portfolio because you said, look, on a standalone basis, the payoff here is massive, right? If our views on rates kind of hold, um, you know, you can make those larger than just a pure hedge, right? It's a bit like, you know, for you don't want to spend too much money on insurance. Otherwise, it's too expensive to live in your home, right? You don't want to, the payoff on your, on your insurance policy like if you, you know, the storm comes, you collect $10 million for your $2 million home. You can't even do that today, but let's assume you can. But if, if the insurance policy, if you knew that, that there was a storm coming, the insurance company was still willing to sell you that homeowner's policy at the same price as if there were no storm, you should overinsure. And so I, I think our only mistake there is we could have overinsured a bit more because we, we knew a storm was coming.